This is A level stats from 2022. All right, so the first thing is the binomial. It looks like uh, uh, n is 15, p is 0 0.48, so that's fine. Go into calculator. And use binomial of pd with variable um, with x equals 3, and just get this number out. If you use those two things as the mean and the, or as the n and the p. And then this one, this is the same as 1 minus x less than or equal to 4. And then, of course, we can use the binomial cd function in the calculator and uh, put in 4 again. And we'll get 1 minus whatever we get at, so, which will be this here. We now do it 250 times and use a normal approximation. So when you do a normal approximation, it's np into np1 minus p. This is actually given in the formula book, so you can just use that. 250 times uh, p, which is 0 0.48, is this. And that 0 0.48 times, or sorry, 120 times 0 0.52 will give you that. And now we have to do is say we want x to be greater than or equal to 110. Now that's on the binomial distribution, so we want to do a normal, which means we'll actually want to be greater than 110.5. I'm just doing a continuity correction. And then, of course, we can do one le minus a less than that. So we'll do a binomial, uh, sorry, we'll do a normal uh, distribution now, normal CD because we're less than or equal to. Variable, uh, in fact, I don't even know whether that's an option there. Lower, upper, you can choose lower to be zero, upper to be this, and eventually, uh, if you pick mean to be that, and remember, standard deviation is root this, um, then we should get the answer of this, which we can then get with this. Okay, question number two then. So we've got all this going on. Uh, so it's one of these ones where you have to find the standard deviation of the distribution. So we're going to do x, which is this, minus mean, divided by standard deviation. So that's the initial setup. So it's normal where we don't know the standard deviation. So x minus mean divided by this thing that we don't know. And what does that equal? Well, it equals the chance of being under 2.5% in a standard normal distribution. So if you do calc inverse normal area 0 0.025, which is this here, um, and then mu, uh, that should be a, that should actually look like a mu, uh, you do, but whatever. Um, so you do mu equals zero, standard deviation is one. Um, you end up with this. If you type all that into a calculator correctly, you get this. And then, of course, you can solve for x and you get what they wanted you to get, which is nice. And then you calculate the proportion between this and this. So that's the probability of being in between, again, with, with this normal distribution where we now know the standard deviation. Um, now, the probability of being between those two things is just the probability of being less than this one minus the probability of being less than this one. Um, you'll forgive me for playing so fast and least with these signs because I, I just don't care. I just copy and paste the stuff I was doing before. Uh, it, it really doesn't make much of a difference. And uh, then you type these things into the calculator um, using the same um, normal CD function we used on the previous page with these two numbers, this one first, then this one, and we get these two results, which we take away and we get this. And then it says here, the cost of producing a single, single metal rod is that, where this is this, this, this. So if the rod is less than this, which has probability of this happening, then you sell it for scrap for this. If you're between these two, which has probability this, then you sell it for 50. And if you're bigger than this, which must have probability um, 1 minus this, which is 0 0.036, then you essentially make a profit of 40 pence, balancing out those two. So our total profit will be 5 pence times uh, the number of these that we expect, which is this times 500, I think, um, plus 50 pence, uh, times the prob uh, times how many we expect to be here, which is this times 500, plus 40 pence, which is the profit from this exercise, um, times this times 500 to see how many of those we get, which makes total profit this, except that's not profit, that's just the total, um, what's it called in economics, I can't even remember, the gross, gross, whatever. Um, if you want to take away costs, it costs 20 pence per each of these you do, so 500 times, I I'll change this to pounds now, 0 0.2, I did all this in pence, by the way, which is why I changed that to that. Uh, but now I'm actually working in pounds, I guess. 0 0.2 times 500 is this. You take these away, and you get this as your profit. Uh, the same manufacturer does this in large batches, probability of this having a fault. So we can just do binomial again now, I think. X equals B, N is this, P is that, I think is what we can use. And uh, we just want to know uh, what the probability of having six fewer than six. So we just need to be probability less than root to five. So calculator binomial CD variable x is five. You type that into calculator, you get this, and so that's the probability of uh, fewer than six being fault uh, being faulty. But that's a much uh, is 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 nowhere near the ninety five percent that they want. So it's unlikely that they'll achieve their own based on this here. Is what we'll say. All right. So apparently you need to know that if very small numbers in rainfall are given, that it's called trace or TR. I have no idea why A level maths expects you to know that. So what is the point? Anyway, next, you need to know that the mean is just the sum of all the numbers divided by how many there are, which I believe you learnt in like year five, probably. 
then the standard deviation is given to you in the formula book. This will be the best one to use because we have this tick, we have this tick, and we have this because we just worked out x bar. That's the mean. So we put that in there and we get this answer here. And then he believes that uh, rainfall in August is less in the South UK than it is in the North, which is probably true. However, based on our large data set information, um, because we have obviously all have the knowledge that whatever this is, Luchars, I don't know, because we all have the knowledge that Luchars is more north in the UK than Camborne is, this actually doesn't make sense, right? This more northerly place gets much less rainfall on average. Um, so this doesn't support his belief. Again, I have literally no idea why anyone thought this is a worthwhile thing to test people's knowledge of or why on earth. I just don't understand. And, and no one is going to be able to explain that to me. Anyway, this person uses the set to estimate portion days uh, with no rain. Uh, this is probably not a good idea because binomial distribution requires independent events and rain probably isn't an independent event. Um, I mean, one day which has rain probably means it's more likely to have rain the next day as well. There are long periods of time where there isn't any rain, um, particularly in the summer, I guess. Like you, you don't want to just, yeah, this is just a bad idea. A dentist from past records knows from past records 10% of people turn up late. Random sample of 50. Uh, so this is another binomial. You've got N50, P is 0 0.1, I would guess. Our null hypothesis is that uh, the probability of late being late is 0 0.1. And we believe he believe it's changed. Now it uses the word changed. Um, so we'll just say the alternative hypothesis P is not equal to 0.1. And then we'll do a two-tailed test, which means we want 0 0.025 on either end. So we just bang out the uh, the binomial distribution here. It's probably the easiest way of doing this, actually. Like we're looking for the x value such that being less than that is 0 0.025. Probably the easiest way of doing this is just going to the tables that are in the formula book that you get given. Going to n is 50. Uh, P we is, is 0 0.1 here, so P is 0 0.1, and just finding what value makes us less than this. And the only value that does that is actually uh, this one right here. So we want x to be, uh, so the probability of it being less than or x, or essentially equal to x, is this. And so we uh, critical region is going to be x equals 0 on one side. And on the other side, uh, 1 minus this is uh, 0 0.975, is it, something like that? Um, now, we can see from here the probability of being less than or equal to 9 is that, which means that is saying the probability of being greater than or equal to 10 is also uh, is, is 1 minus that, right? Um, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm correct there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and that's within the critical region. This is slightly less than this is. So x is greater than or equal to 10 and x equals 0 are going to be our critical regions on each end. And the actual like, level of significance is just this number plus this number. Um, uh, you just add them together and get your critical thing. Manager observes that 15 are late. Uh, 15 is well within the critical region, um, so it probably backs up his belief. 15 is the Venn diagram question. So, I mean, firstly, skilled is just this plus this over the total. Uh, lives in B and is not a professional. Lives in B, not a professional, is this plus this over the total. Next one, 65%. So what I did, just with a calculator, is I read this and worked out 65% of each of those things and just wrote them down in red. And then I worked out 40% of each of those things. And then I worked out 5% of each of those things. Probably overkill, you probably don't need to do that. Looking at the Venn diagram now, the, the first thing, so H, just I don't know why they changed these letters to not, you know, like why is the event A not, like why would you change? It's just H is H is own, to be fair. I didn't even notice that. So they managed to get one out of three logic, logical, but the others I just understand. Anyway, um, the easiest thing to start with here is to write in the center, right? How many people both work from home, are from area A, and also are a professional? And because uh, that's not too hard to see, it's going to be um, just this number here. The red is the ones that work from home, and they're in the A and professional column. So 481 needs to go in the middle here. And then you can read this circle here. We're only missing one value. So from this circle, how many people work from home? Well, that's just these three, these six red values added together, right? So add up all the six red values and then take away these three and we get this one here. Um, and then for this circle here, exactly the same thing. R is the event there from A. So add up all these black values, the, the number of people from A, and then take away these three values and you get this. And then outside of here, we just take the total number of employees and take away all of the things that we currently have and we'll end up with this number here. Uh, next, find the probability that you're not in R, so not in the R circle, and in the F circle. 
So not in R, so outside of R, but in F is going to be these two. So add those up, divide by the total number of people. Find the probability that we're in the union of H and R. So union of H and R is these two things, but we're actually not there. Um, so probably so that we're just not there at all, uh, which is uh, just going to be, so sorry, the union of H and R is, is all of this, isn't it? Sorry, I was talking about the intersection. The union is all of this. So not in the union means just being one of those two values. So we add up those two and divide by the total. And then we can use the conditional formula, one for this one. Um, so this is going to be the same as probability of F intersected with H, which is these two. So those two over the total divided by just the probability of H, which is everything in this circle divided by the total. So just uh, for the top bit, it's just these two divided by the total. And then this bit down here, probability of B, which is probability of H is all of those divided by the total. That cancels with this, and you just get this over this, which would be that. Uh, last question then. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. Interpret the nature of... So, okay. so M is the number of minutes of exercising each week. As you spend more time each week exercising, your um, resting heart rate goes down, is what you have to write, apparently. Because, again, that's considered something that's worth testing people's knowledge of in A-level maths. Product moment co coefficient is this. Uh, we just need to bang out the table that says product moment coefficient in it, and we'll find, uh, I mean, firstly, we should probably state our hypothesis, shouldn't we? H0 is that the um, coefficient is actually zero. Alternative hypothesis is that it's less than zero. I'll just do a one-tailed test. Uh, so I'm looking for one tail is 0 0.05. N is 19. I think it says before. I think I've covered up the knowledge that N is 19. Uh, yeah, there, 19. Uh, so 19 and 0 0.05 is that. If our number is bigger than that, and you can ignore the negatives, then uh, we can take the alternative hypothesis, which it is. So there is evidence of a negative correlation. Quite a lot of evidence, actually. It's quite a lot bigger. And finally, we'll do some actual maths to finish up the paper. So we'll substitute y in with this thing, and we'll do x in with this thing. And then we'll use log laws to move this minus 0 0.05 up to the top there. Then we'll do 10. We'll raise both sides to the power 10, which will cancel out this log 10 and just leave us at root h. And when you raise both sides to the power 10 here, Again, you don't do individual terms. You raise the entire side. You raise everything you wrote down here to the power with a 10 beneath it. Now here, we're adding up two things in an exponent. So what we can do is we can say this is the same as 10 to the power this times 10 to the power that. Because, of course, if you've got the same base and you're modifying, you add the powers together, which would give us this line up here. Of course, this is just a number. And this here, this 10 cancels with this log 10, and we end up with this. We can swap those over if we want to like this. And now we can see that a, what they've given us here, is going to be 10 to the power 1.92, and K is going to be minus 0.05. And that's the whole paper. Thanks for watching.